In today's video, we are going to talk about the four golden rules from Airbus. You will see to who are these rules applicable, why they are so important, because we are going through the four golden rules one by one giving you, I will give you practical example why they are so important. And then I will tell you why you can use these four golden rules from Airbus from your day to day operations, regardless of your type of the aircraft. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Do it. Hi there, my name is Gabriele from pilotclimb.com. So first of all, who are these rules applicable to? These four golden rules from Airbus are applicable to modern transport jet aircraft. They are guidance to, to assist the pilot flying and the pilot monitoring during the normal, non-normal and emergency situation. The first rule is fly, navigate and communicate in this specific order and task sharing. I'm sure during your pilot training, your instructor always told you this rule, but this is very important. You should not underestimate the importance of this rule because what does it mean? Fly, navigate and communicate. So whatever happens to you during your operations, let's say you're flying and then all of a sudden you have a non-normal situation. This situation should not distract you from flying the actual plane especially when you are taking off, landing, go around, when you are low, when you are close to the ground, a non-normal situation should not distract you from flying the actual plane. What happens normally is that when you have a non-normal situation, let's say during takeoff or during the approach, you take care of the non-normal situation, looking at the ECAM or reading the QRH, whatever it is, or checking the lights, and you're not actually flying the real plane. So what is very important to do on the fly of the first golden rule from Airbus is that regardless of what happens is that you stay first of all focused on flying the plane. So if during takeoff for example you have a normal situation first of all check your PFD and make sure that you are flying in the right direction. You, the aircraft is not, it doesn't have to do something for example a clean up for example a flap retraction or make sure that you don't pitch up or pitch down while you are trying to solve the problem, okay? Make sure that you fly first the aircraft regardless of what happens on board. Then the second step is the navigate. So once you understood, once you are making sure that the aircraft is uh, in a good attitude and the correct uh, uh, flying envelope, okay, navigate. Make sure that you know where you are compared to the terrain regarding uh, in relation to the terrain, okay? So first of all, fly the plane. Make sure that you level off if you need to level off or you keep climbing if you need, if you want to keep climbing but in the correct way. And then make sure that you know where you're going. Make sure that you know where the terrain is and where actually the aircraft should be and where it should go, okay? So then after you've done the flight, once after you've done the navigate, you can communicate. So communication doesn't only mean the ATC, but it also means your pilot flying or pilot monitoring and vice versa, okay? So it is very important to stress that the operations of the aircraft is not only responsibility of the pilot flying, but is a shared responsibility between the pilot flying and pilot monitor. So fly the plane first, regardless of what happens, make sure that the aircraft is flying safely, navigate, make sure that if you level off, you don't fly into a terrain or a thunderstorm or any other things. Okay, so fly, navigate, make sure you know where you're going and then communicate with your colleague, with your pilot monitor, your pilot flying, communicate with ATC, communicate with your cabin crew if you need it. The second golden rule is use the appropriate level of automation at all the times. What does it mean? Is that as a pilot flying and pilot monitor, as a crew, you should think about what is the situation that you've got in front of you and decide which type of automation you should use, especially for your approach and descent. Are you going to do in a low visibility a manual landing? Maybe not. So when the visibility is marginal, maybe you want to go for an auto land. So you want to use the level of automation appropriate for that specific scenario, okay? Or if there are thunderstorms around, are you going to fly manual during the descent or during, during the climb? Maybe not, because you want to lower your load, uh, you load while you're operating the aircraft in order to make sure that you take your weather and terrain into consideration throughout your descent or climb. So that is actually 
choose the right level of automation depending on the scenario. The third rule is understand your FMA at all the time. So FMA is very, very important. The FMA is the part that is on top of your PFD that tells you what the aircraft actually is doing, what the autopilot is actually telling the aircraft to do. Because you have the FCU or the MCP in case of the Boeing, but in the Airbus is the FCU, where you can select the modes, for example, vertical speed, open descent, open climb, and so on. But that is just a selection. What is important is that you actually understand your FMA. So on top of the PFD, you have these fields where you have the auto thrust information, you have your lateral, your vertical mode, the capability of the aircraft, and so on. So you need to make sure as a pilot on the Airbus that you understand at all the times what the FMA is saying, because that is what it's going to do, okay? So if you are in doubt about what the FMA is saying, make sure that you study the FMA, make sure that you understand. And on top of that, not only understand what if the FMA is telling you, but be one step ahead of the FMA, but know what you should expect from the FMA. So if you are, for example, you want to select open climb, you select open climb on the FC FCU and then you look at the FMA expecting what you should read in there. Okay, this is a very, very good way to operate an Airbus aircraft. Because if you don't understand the FMA and I tell you the Airbus has pretty big FMA compared to the Boeing, you're going to go into troubles because the aircraft will tell you it's going to do something and you think that the aircraft is doing something else. The last rule, the fourth rule is take action if things don't go as expected. Okay, so if you're, let's say, you're flying and you expect the aircraft to do something because you're flying with the autopilot on, okay, and you expect the FMA to tell you something, but actually it's doing something else, so the FMA is doing something else, Take action, okay? So make sure that don't wait, don't rely too much on the automation, okay? So what does it mean taking action? Either changing the mode from open descent, for example, to vertical speed, or even lower the level of automation to the basics, or disconnect the autopilot and fly the aircraft manually. But take action, don't wait for the aircraft to actually solve the situation, because the autopilot, the automations of the aircraft are there to help you and not to fly the plane. You should be always in charge of the plane, of the operations of the aircraft. And the operations of the aircraft, again, is a shared responsibility between pilot monitoring and pilot flying. So, if the pilot monitoring is aware and sees that there is something that is going on with the aircraft, the FMA is not doing what it's supposed to do, or the aircraft is not doing what it's supposed to do, it should uh, bring this to the attention of the pilot flying. And the pilot flying should take the corrective action, which could be, again, changing the mode or when the, the situation is quite uh, uh, tight, even disconnect the autopilot and fly the aircraft manually. Once the aircraft is back to the attitude it should be and uh, flying the path that it's supposed to do, it's supposed to be, re-engage the automation is always a good practice. So, for example, I can give you a practical example. Let's say you are in an intercept, uh, in an heading to intercept a localizer which is closer in one side you have the mountains, okay, and you see that the, you, pr you press localizer but the aircraft doesn't intercept the localizer when the localizer is coming. What are you going to do? Are you going to wait magically to the aircraft to intercept the localizer or you wait a little bit and then if you said it's not intercepting the localizer you disconnect the loc and intercept the localizer manually? From my point of view, it's very important that the aircraft turns to the right or to the left and doesn't go too close to the mountain. So you want to make sure you take the appropriate action that makes sure that you intercept the localizer. Okay, so you wait, but if you see that something is wrong, you just take the action. Either you go on A in select and intercept the localizer, or you even disconnect the autopilot and intercept the localizer manually. Once you are intercepting on the localizer, you can easily re-engage the automations and make sure that you fly a nice 3 degrees ILS. So guys, as you can see, these are four golden rules that should be followed by the Airbus pilots when operating an Airbus aircraft. However, I can tell you that these are very uh, four golden rules that you should use and you should take on board regardless of the type of the aircraft because you should always fly the aircraft first, you should always know where you're going, you should always take, make sure that everybody is informed about what's going on. You should know your aircraft, know your FMA, know your system. You should also take actions if the aircraft is not doing what you expect. So these are four golden rules for Airbus, but my suggestion is to take uh, is to take them on board regardless of your aircraft. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. Give it a like to the video if you like it and consider subscribing.